In this sports design tutorial, we're going to take these photos and turn them into this game day graphic for the Boston Celtics. The first step of this design is the gray floor that disappears into the background. So I have an image of some hardwood flooring that I found off Google Images that I placed behind my subjects. I then took the eraser tool and took off the top half of the image so that I only have the hardwood. Then we're going to use the eraser tool again to gently brush over the top until you get this fading effect that you see on your screen. Next, we're going to change the color of our flooring to the gray version that you saw in the finished product. You can do this by making a hue and saturation layer above your flooring and then reducing the saturation. It's important that you then clip this layer to your floor so that it only affects the hardwood floor, not the rest of your image. All right, now we're going to sharpen our images. So you can see that the left image, the two players have no sharpening applied to them, while the right side has the sharpening applied. Go to Camera Raw Filter and then increase the following. Texture, Clarity, Shadows, Whites, and Blacks. What this is going to do is increase the brightness of your image and at the same time increase the clarity and overall sharpening of your player photos. The next thing you can do is go to the Detail tab and then increase the sharpening and noise reduction. What noise reduction does is it smooths out your player's skin. Here is the Before Any Camera Raw Filter. And here's the after. I made the same changes within Camera Raw Filter to the smaller player as well. The next thing we have are player shadows. These are pretty simple, but they can take your graphics to the next level. First, you're gonna add a black color fill and then clip it to your player layer. I have a hotkey attached to clipping mask, so you guys aren't gonna see me actually applying the clipping mask, but you can do this by right clicking or control clicking on your layer and then going to create clipping mask. Next, you're gonna wanna invert your mask by first making sure that you're clicked on your mask layer and then hit command I. The next step is to click the paintbrush on the left side of your screen and then have the white color selected with your opacity around 10%. You now can paint back on those shadows where you see fit. Again, this is the before and then the after. You're really just trying to make the skin pop and increase the contrast between the shadows and the brighter skin layer. This is shown well in the before and the after picture right here. Step four is text design. So you can see I have this white shadow behind my lettering and I'm going to show you guys how that was done. So I have my text layer here and I'm going to hit the effect button on the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to go to outer glow. If you increase your opacity that makes your glow brighter and then if you increase the size that's kind of self explanatory but it's just how large the glow actually is behind your lettering. Next I have a picture of the Celtics arena and I want to put that inside of my text like you see on the screen right here. So what you can do is you can take your image and make sure that it is above the text layer and then we can control click on that layer and then go to create clipping mask. What this will do is put your image inside of the lettering. You then can lower the opacity of your city image to bring back out that green that we lost when we put it inside of the text. I then added a bunch of different text and lettering to the overall design. One of the cool effects that I want to show you guys is how to spread these letters out right here. So you can do this by going up to window and then character and then you can increase this value right here. This is just going to increase the spacing between your letters and then it creates this cool effect. Step five is to create shadows on the ground like you see in the picture. You want to make it look like the light is coming from the bottom of your game day text. So what you can do is duplicate your player layer. With that layer duplicated, you can go up to edit fill and then you can go down to fill layer with black and once you have that you can control click on that layer that you just made and flip it vertically. We then can erase parts of the shadow that we don't want. Next you can decrease your opacity and then we're going to add a blur to make it more realistic. You can do this by going up to filter blur and then add a Gaussian blur. You can increase or decrease the slider to affect the amount of blur that you want on your image. Adding light flares adds a really great effect to this design and this can be done by taking a light flare and then switching it to blend mode screen. Next going up to image adjustments hue and saturation and then we're going to turn the saturation down 
to make it a white flare. The last thing I did in this design was add a little bit of a background. You can see it's just different PNGs that I found online. I also added some green to the background by painting on green and then lowering the opacity. And just a reminder, at 2,500 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away another graphics pack. So this will include stuff like light flares and overlays. Um, also, I was thinking about putting PSD files in there. So please make sure you guys are subscribed and have those notifications on so you don't miss the giveaway. And this is my final result. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please check out some of my other design breakdowns. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.